So I was due to fly out to the Love Island Villa on the Monday and then on the Friday I got a call from the Love Island team, thought it was totally normal and that's when they told me. So I applied for Love Island last year, for last year's series. Um, I was working in a job I didn't like and I just started my TikTok and I thought, perfect. So I applied and three days later I got a call from one of the casting producers and had a telephone interview very quickly and um, that went really well and then had another phone interview maybe a few days later and then the weeks to come after that I had so many Zoom interviews. So these Zoom interviews were with like the casting producers, then I had some with the executive producers like for ITV and they would just ask you loads of questions like how would you you know react if you were with someone and they were chatting to someone else and like would you bring drama to the villa like what would your role be there like so many questions they would ask about like, they would also ask you questions like would you ever cheat like so many random things like it felt like i had just months of job interviews but i was so excited because i just never ever thought they would even consider me um for the villa and i was just like this would be like a dream come true that was literally my goal at the time like anyway so after i'd had my interview with the executive producers i was told to wait and if i was successful and to be moved further on then I would get a call um, by the end of May. So it was quiet for about a month and then it got to the end of May and I was thinking, okay, like obviously they didn't want me, blah, 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 you know, kind of sad. <laughs> and then I got a call um, when I was at work and it was from the same casting producer that had called me initially and he was saying um, that they wanted me to come down to London for a medical check. And I was like, Oh my gosh like when they said medical check i was thinking oh am i going in like so yeah i was very excited and then because i was at work like i was trying to figure it out with them because it's a school you don't get annual leave or anything so anyway i managed to um get down there for my medical check um and you went to like a private doctor and um they did all of your like you know S sti checks and they did like blood pressure just basic stuff um, but during this appointment, they asked for access to my medical record, which obviously I said yes. And they gave me a big sheet of um, health problems and to tick whether I'd ever had anything like that. Um, so it was everything on there, including bleeding disorders, skin conditions, things like this, which we will get onto. But I didn't declare anything on this form um, and... I had the checks, went home, and then you were supposed to get an email a couple of days later, so I got that. Everything was clear, everything was fine, so I was like, amazing. So that was it, that was like the next step, and I was thinking, okay. And during this time as well, they were sending me um, paperwork, like signing for like going abroad, and, and just like what will happen when you get to the villa. And I, it, as you can imagine at the time, my mind was like, am I going on Love Island? I was just like, what the heck? So it was all a bit confusing. But anyway, after this check, I um, then got invited to London again to ITV Studios to meet with um, like the series producers uh, and like the main main casting producer. Um, so I went and met with them, and they were so lovely. And I just had like I had to sit in front of a camera like this, and it was like you know when you see the Love Islanders when they do their initial interviews, it was like that. So they would ask you those kinds of questions, and you would talk as if you were doing your initial, "Hey, I'm Ellie, and I'm from here, and I, you know, that kind of thing, and I love boys." Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, and that went really well. But honestly, I was like, I remember I was so sweaty because it was so hot and I was in London and I've been traveling and I was thinking I'm on this camera and I just know I do not look my best. Um, but anyway, so I was just chatting away, just being myself. And then I left that and they were like, oh, we'll, we'll see you again. We'll see you again. I thought, oh my gosh, I've done it. Like I am going on Love Island. <laughs> That's what I was my thought process at the time. And then as well at ITV Studios, there was a really lovely lady and she took me into a room and did all my measurements. Um, and because 
like during the challenges when they do all the the challenges they all wear matching outfits and stuff and um, also you do get some stuff like gifted things like that so she was taking all my measurements for all of that and it just felt very real at that point um, and I was just buzzing. Bear in mind at this time as well I couldn't tell anyone like I was allowed at this point at the, at the start I couldn't tell anyone at this point I was allowed to tell like my really close family um, but I did tell a couple of my really close friends as well because I just couldn't keep it a secret uh, but anyway so that was all that as I say it was all very hazy like the whole thing like you were on this journey but you didn't really know what was happening and you still weren't confirmed or anything so basically I was at work one day um, and so it wasn't long after this London visit it was probably a couple of days and I got a call from a lady and she said I remember I was in the cleaning cupboard at work because I didn't want anyone to know what was going on so I answered and she was like so at the minute we don't have a slot for you on the um, like like main lineup, and um, but what we want to do is we still want to fly. We still want to sorry. We still want to fly you out um, and have you do something called the dry run with the potential of going on the show. So to explain what the dry run is, so they have you go into the villa like three days before the um, other people go in and you do everything in like three days so everything they're going to do the whole series you do it all in three days so they can test like the production if everything works blah blah blah, blah. and um then you can potentially go on the show so what i was told when she was telling me this because i was a bit gutted but i was like still excited she said that like shauna and like um molly not molly may molly smith she said that they were dry runners in their series and then they got put on the main show so i was like do you know what i'm just gonna go out there do the dry run show them how fun and cool I am and then I was very confident I would get on the show because I'd set my mind to it and I would got that far I was thinking what the heck so I still had to prepare as if I was going out for the whole summer so I was like in contact with the welfare team a lot and they would tell you so everything that you needed because you had to do two weeks quarantine in a hotel when you got out there so what would happen um, is you would go out to the hotel and they would take your phone, you weren't allowed anything um, to like have contact with the outside world. So you would have two weeks just in there alone. Um, and usually they would have a chaperone stay with you, but because of COVID, you would actually be like totally alone, but you would have your chaperone that would kind of like talk to you regularly and would talk to your family for you and stuff like that. So I was prepping for this um, and I had to buy all of my clothes as if I was going out for the whole summer. So I spent like two grand on clothes and then just like toiletries and like lashes because you weren't allowed lash extensions either because um like lash extensions and nails you had to get stick on nails and stick on lashes because usually in the other series they'd have people that would do your nails and and like do your lash lashes like the upkeep on them and um, but because of covid again they couldn't do that like they couldn't fly those people out um, so yeah, there was all, it was very different the year that I was going for it. So it was all very random. So I was prepping, getting ready. And then during this time as well, I had to have psychological checks. And then my dad had to have a psychological check to kind of check that the family could cope with um, the potential fame that would come and the like media attention. Um, so she like, I remember being on the Zoom call with her and she was asking me like all about my childhood and my friendships, like everything. She really like dug deep. And one thing I do have to say is that they are really careful with welfare. Like they are so on it. So that is definitely, it's definitely good. It's something that needs to happen. But yeah, we passed all the, um, passed all the psychological checks uh, and that was that. So yeah, it was just like preparation. And at this point I was in contact with the welfare team like every day and they would just like check in with you, check how you were doing and like, you know, just see if you got anything, everything prepared. Do you have any questions? Like, how are you feeling? Are you feeling anxious at all? And they were just really, really sweet and nice. So I was just really excited at this point because at the end of the day, I was going out and there was a really high likelihood that I was going to end up on the series. If not, I was getting a free holiday to Mallorca and um, just having fun and going in the Love Island Villa and meeting people. And it was just such an exciting time. So anyway, I was... Um, I quit my job 
at the school I like just left and I did feel a bit bad but I, I just had to because I couldn't serve my notice period because I needed to go out and I was not letting this opportunity pass me by so um I sorry my camera's telling me that it's gonna go to sleep so I was just uh, distracted by that but anyway so I'd left the school and I'd gone and worked a few shifts casual back at an old job that I really loved but you can be I still had a casual contract there so I was all prepared to go and um, I was flying out on the Monday I had my PCR for the weekend because you had to have PCR to go out and um, on the Friday I was working my last shift um, at my casual job and I got a message from the welfare team saying um, are you free for a quick chat and I was like okay that's fine so I just explained to my manager I just needed to take a really important call and they call you regularly so I thought it's just gonna be another quick like check on everything and maybe tell me some more information etc but it wasn't. I got this call from the welfare team and it wasn't the girl I usually speak to. She was on the call, but there was another lady on there and she was like the head of welfare. And I thought, oh my gosh. And basically she told me um, that they'd spoken to my GP, which I'd given them permission to do. And they'd spoken to my GP and it was really last minute because my GP hadn't got back to them very fast. And basically they'd found out about three things that I hadn't declared um, medically and I was like, oh my God. So, so they said that I hadn't declared a condition called Von Willebrand's, which is a bleeding disorder, which means that I bleed more easily. Um, but mine is very borderline and I used to be on medication for it at um, like 16 and I haven't taken medication since then so I didn't declare it but you know what this was my fault I should have 100% declared it but I didn't. There was also the fact that I have vitiligo and um, which means that I have white patches on my skin and um, like really white patches like on my armpit there and it just means that they're very sensitive to the sun. I'm not on any medication for it but I just didn't even think to mention that, but I guess, yeah, same again, they, they have a point. And then um, the third was that I'd gone to one session of CBT therapy when I was a teenager, um, because different story, but this, this guy once tried to get me in his car, um, and I had a lot of anxiety about going out, because um, that was when I was like 13, so that was that, it wasn't anything, it was just something that had happened and I was really scared by it so I was a bit scared of going out of the house and um but I'm over that now but yeah so I hadn't declared that and honestly I'd forgotten about it because I only went to one session and she like tried blaming me for wearing a, a dress and I was like I'm not going back to this lady so I was like oh my gosh I'm so sorry like what what do we do like do I get my GP to ring the ITV doctor and they said it's like too late because it was the Friday. They needed to clear me medically. It's not that you can't go on with these conditions or if you've been to therapy or whatever. It's the fact that they can't clear you in time to actually go out. So they need to, because it's health and safety and everything, they need to have the okay from their medical team. And because it was COVID, I had this two week hotel quarantine that I had to do. So to fit it all in the time frame. It just didn't work. I left work and um, I said I've got to go. I had like I was having like a panic attack. I went home and I was just crying to my dad and we were trying to ring the GP and the GP did actually get in touch with the ITV doctor and um, but it still just wasn't enough and I got um, confirmation from the welfare team that afternoon that no I couldn't go out and participate in the dry run as planned. So I was absolutely gutted and they told me though that I still couldn't tell anyone because they would potentially draw on, uh, draw on me, I don't know. They would potentially contact me during the series last year and they would ask me to come out and be like, a bombshell, you know, or something like that. I might still participate in the series so I still couldn't tell anyone until that series ended. That was it and then I remember going out in my car that night and just filming a load of TikToks and just trying to do something to make myself feel better because I felt like, I felt so stupid because honestly it was my fault, like I should have declared literally everything but I just, I just didn't think they were that important because they don't affect me anymore and the bit of like I didn't think anything of it but I guess yeah it's the sun and Miyaka is hot and I guess, yeah, they, they have to be careful, don't they? So it is my fault and I do not in any way blame ITV for this. Um, it was all on me. Uh, oh, my camera died, so I'm back. Um, but you probably didn't even know I was gone. 
basically I was just a bit stupid and how different life might have been but who knows like who really knows and with stuff like this you just have to put it to bed in a way because you can't dwell on it because I just came to the acceptance that that path wasn't meant for me and obviously I'm meant for something else and that's what I had to do otherwise I think I would have had a breakdown not even joking so um so yeah but I mean it worked out okay because when I this all happened I had about 200,000 followers on TikTok and it honestly motivated me to be like right come on focus on the content it gave me a focus and I really just went crazy and now I have a million followers and you know everything happens for a reason I guess everyone's like would you apply again and stuff and I honestly don't think I would because I've kind of just taken it as a sign that I'm not meant to do that and that's okay but I do definitely want to get into um, TV, so ITV if you are watching. Um, I just think I'd be really good on this morning, like being an agony aunt and having people call up like, hey Ellie, my boyfriend is cheating on me, what do I do? And I would be like, hey girl, dump him. Dump him, make yourself a cup of tea and send him that text that it's over. Just, that was my audition, so I hope you liked it ITV. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, that's it. So if you do have any questions, feel free to comment them below. Make sure to subscribe as well. Um, but yeah, ask any questions and I can always do like another video um, focusing on bits because obviously I've kind of gone through it really fast because I didn't want to make this video like three hours long. But yeah, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But yeah, I think that's everything. And thank you for watching. And yeah, goodbye. <laughs> I'm so awkward.